Okay, why don't we, uh, why don't we get started? Um, thank you for coming first on a Saturday morning. Really appreciate it. Um, my name is Mark Evans. Uh, I run a consulting business called ME Consulting, um, which, which helps, um, which makes marketing work for a fast growing company. So basically, my clients are small businesses, they're startups, um, they've got uh, product market fit, and they've got customers, and they're looking to accelerate their marketing, take it to the next level. And, uh, and my, my business is, uh, is powered by the power of storytelling. Um, so what we're going to do today, it's an interactive session, so if you've got pen and paper or you want to work on your computers, there's a series of exercises. So what I'm hoping to get you to do today is think about storytelling and think about how we're all storytellers in one way or the other. Like The reality is we all are good storytellers when we tell stories all the time. And what you want to do is power, is harness that ability to power your, your business forward, to make your marketing and your sales um, more impactful and, and really resonate with the people that matter to you. So before we get started, um, the hashtag is, is uh, PZTO18, and if you're on the Twitter, my, um, my name is Mark Evans. So a little bit about what I do is, so I started off as a reporter, so I've, I've always been a storyteller. I worked for the National Post, the Global Mail, Bloomberg, and the South China Morning Post in Hong Kong. So storytelling has always been sort of a part of my DNA and helping sort of take all the information in the world that we're inundated with all the time and make it into something accessible and readable. I worked for four startups. Um, one of them, Sysmos, got bought by three for $35 million. The rest of them were terrible disasters, didn't want to work very well, but that's part of it. And some of my clients these days, um, as I said, a lot of them are VC-backed. Um, I find that small businesses, um, they love to do marketing. They like the idea of marketing, but they have no money for marketing, which means they have to work for companies that actually have money for marketing. Um, so to start, does anybody eat um, nuggets at McDonald's? Anybody want to admit to eating nuggets at McDonald's? If you're one person in the crowd, you're a very great person. Um, and the, the reason that I want to start with this is that there's a story here, and I'll show you the story. Sound well. So did you know that there are four different names for Chicken McNuggets? I never knew that. about as entrepreneurs is get into that storytelling mindset. I think a lot of brands and a lot of entrepreneurs are challenged because you hear a lot about storytelling and that storytelling is the new black and we all have to be storytellers and then we get it because we understand the power of stories. But when it comes to implementing stories into action, there's a block, right? Like we can't, we have a hard time turning storytelling into marketing and sales collateral. And what I'm hoping to help you understand today is that that gap is, is is very, very narrow. You can leap over that gap, and then you can tell stories on your websites and your infographics and your newsletters and your videos, and all the things that you do to drive your business forward can embrace the power of storytelling. So a little bit of an exercise here. Um, what does storytelling mean to you as an entrepreneur? Anybody want to volunteer? Yeah, in the front. Um, I've helped, I'm on my third startup. Uh, congratulations, that's amazing. Um, helping them tell their stories. But storytelling is the best way to get your messages across. Storytelling lets you know how a brand can help your customer. Great. Anybody else? Yeah. Emotional attachment. Emotional attachment. We'll, we'll talk to you a little bit later in the presentation, which is amazing, because the reality is that you think that people make buying decisions based on logic. You know, rational thought, and they don't do that at all. They make buying decisions based on emotion, and storytelling triggers emotions, which is really important. Yeah. Um, they're memorable. Memorable, yeah, for sure, absolutely. They're, they're relatable. Relatable. It's another one. These are all excellent reasons to embrace the power of storytelling. So 
So those are just sort of some of the things we need to think about. Just some high level things with the power of storytelling. So the other thing is um, the Golden Circle. Anybody heard of Simon Sinek and the Golden Circle? So Simon Sinek believes that the heart of our business is the why, right? So it's why do you do what you do? So he starts at the outside of the circles. What do you do? Which is really simple, right? So I do marketing for fast growing companies. And how do you do it? Well, I do strategic and tactical lines. But the, the essence of storytelling, something you have to think about, is the why. So it's, and Simon Sinek says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And it's the idea of, uh, of passion. Diana, your presentation, we talked about why do you do what you do, right? And a core part of that is harnessing what you want to do for a living, how you want to um, serve uh, target audiences, and how it's going to align with what your interests are. So, the, so from Apple, this is his, um, his example. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. That's their why. He says that they, Apple doesn't make computers. What they do is they believe in thinking different. And they challenge the status quo by making beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly computers. And we just happen to make great computers, right? So that's a, that's a great um, sort of illustration of the power of why. And so we're running our businesses and we're thinking, well, why do I do what we do? Your storytelling has to capture that. Like, we'll do the exercise later, but really I want you to think about, like, why is it that you're doing your business? You know, a lot of us are entrepreneurs, and so why are we entrepreneurs? Why not work for a corporation where it's safer? You get that weekly paycheck. So, what is your why? You know, why do you, why do you, why you, why did you start your business? Like, what was the reason why you decided to take the leap into entrepreneurship? Any, uh, any volunteers? You're looking at me, and I'm, I'm just at laughing because I'm like, because I'm a terrible employee. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Well, that's a legitimate one, right? I do far better on my own. <laughs> like, in the, like, why do I do what, what I do? Well, number one is I got fired from my last job, which is not a good thing. But I, I, I enjoy the, the, the ability to, to uh, basically master my own domain, right? If I want to work, I work. If I don't want to work, I don't work, right? On spend time with my kids, I do that. Anybody else? Why is your why? What's your why? Diane, what's your why? Oh my gosh. Um, my why is because I'm sick and tired of seeing entrepreneurs spinning their wheels and then investing in themselves. So I had to do something about this. Right, so you had a passion for helping uh, entrepreneurs. What you have to serve. Right. And you've been chosen to do that, so it's, it's what you do and why we do it. Right, so think about your why, but it can start with anybody else? Yeah. Well, yeah, just to drill down what you said, you said master your domain. So I, I look at it a little bit differently. You know, the most valuable commodity, I think, well, that I had is my time. So essentially that's what you're talking about. Control, overall control of your time. Right, exactly. Okay. So let's look, take a little look, look at why storytelling matters. And we've already touched upon it earlier. So number one is Ben Horowitz, Andreessen Horowitz, like big powerful VC in Silicon Valley. A company without a story is usually a company without strategy. You think about that. You think about who the best brands in the world are. The best brands in the world are great storytellers. So it could be Warby Parker, or it could be Uber, or it could be Airbnb. They're all great storytellers. And so the essence of where you're headed strategically is grounded in storytelling. Mark, if I can ask, and when you're saying that, the fact is, when you have you know, the story that we talked, you know, I didn't realize we talked about, I picked on you about the story. Yeah. It's the fact that also you never forget your mission and your vision. Right. It's always in alignment. It's easy, people can come up with a mission and vision, but if you have your why, it's just so simple. Right. Because you never forget that. And I just out of curiosity, how many people have vision and mission statements? That's good. Awesome. Because it really sort of aligns you in terms of how you want to move forward. And stories ground you in terms of what, what, what is that thing that you're going to say every single day to, to the people that matter to you. The other thing, reason that storytelling matters is because consumers have a lot of information. So the average consumer sees or hears more, more than 100,000 words a day. So text messages, websites, advertising, social media, content marketing, think about that and think about how do you battle that tsunami of information? How do you break through while you tell great stories? Stories are remembered and shared. Somebody said that earlier, right? You think about, you know, the, um, think about when somebody tells you a really great story, what do you do? Well, you share it with other people. You see a really interesting news item, you share it with other people. Stories make the complex simple. So when I was a reporter, I spent a lot of time talking to um, technology uh, entrepreneurs and talking to me in language I did not understand until I said, well, tell me a story. Tell me in a way that I can understand it. And a great example is a client of mine, Flybits. Now, what Flybits does is they make mobile technology that's contextual. So if you're, like, if you're in a certain area, they can tell you the restaurants 
in a certain area, they can tell you the restaurants that would appeal to you based on your demographics, based on your interests, based on your needs. It's a beacon. It's, a beacon. it's, it's a beacon. sort of like a beacon technology, but it's very complicated for people to understand. So I was listening to a sales guy talk to a client, and they weren't getting it. And he said, okay, let me tell you a story. So you go to a football game in, in the UK, and using our app, the football club will basically um, diff tell different stories to different audiences. So if you're 35, it'll tell you, okay, well, there are the bars after the game are located here, here, and here. Um, here's where the great restaurants are. Here's where the great nightclubs are. And that's relevant to him. That's a story that he wants to hear. But if you're 12 years old, that's not a story that you want to hear. You want to hear stories about where you can buy favorite um, sweaters uh, for your favorite players, right? That's a story that's relevant. So once he told that story, using that context, people understood what the app did, right? So it, it really breaks through the noise, yeah. Uh, but I'm just curious the way you're describing it. I mean, I understand what you're saying. I didn't think of that as a story. It says, so this is contextual information. Right. Is that I, I don't think of that as being a story, or maybe my definition. Yeah, of that's a great point because I think that when we when we talk about storytelling, as I said earlier, a lot of entrepreneurs sort of there's a disconnect between well, that's what I told you was not really a story, but in a sense, it's a narrative uh, around an experience, right? So I'm trying to maybe I didn't tell the story well enough, but it's a, it's a it's an attempt to basically sort of have you sort of um, imagine what it would be like to be a 35 year old soccer fan or a 12-year-old soccer fan. And so the idea is that you paint a picture for someone um, that is a much, uh, it's much more interesting than just saying this technology is, a, is beacon technology, right? So that's the, that's the thing that you think about. It doesn't have to be a classic story, but it does have to be about experiences. Mark, uh, yeah. in a case like that, is there multiple stories, layers of stories? <laughs> like, you've got it very broad because you based it on a demographic, but can you sort of narrow it down, almost like a funnel situation? Oh yeah, I mean, so that's the other thing with target audiences is that you can't, one size doesn't fit all when it comes to storytelling because, let's say for example, um, I was at a workshop yesterday and we were talking about uh, storytelling for HR. So the stories that I would tell to attract a developer would be different than the stories that I would tell to attract somebody in marketing and sales. So different audiences, um, same sort of underlying interests, but you have to hit them with, with different highlights, right? So you do have to think about how to slice and dice. It's variations on a theme, basically. Um, stories educate, um, entertain, and engage, right? Um, here's a great example of, of a brand that tells a story in a really interesting way. that want to see the power of story. What would, they, what would happen if they created a really interesting story for a product as mundane as food beans, right? So they released this video, got tons of traffic. On the same day, Heinz, which is the giant baked beans owner, they, they released a video of their own, got 14,000 views. <laughs> so it demonstrates the power of story. Uh, one of the things that somebody mentioned earlier is stories spark emotion, right? So again, right, we're talking about the power of emotion, the power to get into uh, why people make decisions. And there's a whole uh, study about um, neuropsychology and neuroscience when it comes to how the brain operates and what happens when we hear stories. It triggers these neurons in our brain, right? And it allows us to become empathetic and relate to storytelling. So um, when you're thinking about stories, think about not plain stories, but stories like the one, like the video, right? That it's about drama, it's about excitement, it's about the fear of missing out, it's about, um, it's about like, curiosity, all those things that, that make us interesting as human beings, that's the stories you want to tell so that you get people interested in your product or story. Um, stories are also about experiences. So a lot of the best brands in the world, they're not telling stories about their products, they're telling stories about what it's like to use their products. Um, so Airbnb, which is one of the, I think one of the best storytellers in the world, 
like you think about their marketing. It's not about hey, um, you can book a place to stay online anywhere around the world. It's about the joys of travel. The idea is that you could experience new places, new people, new things because you used Airbnb. But they never talk about the fact that you can book places to stay online. Um, Going back to those last few slides, because you, all, you can all um, summarize it by saying with the experience and the stories and so forth, because it's the feeling and the visualization, because your body, the unconscious mind actually stores all of that. So you'll never forget the, the moment, the memory, the feelings, and the attachment, because it's all stored in you. That's why it triggers all the uh, neurotransmitters as well. Um. And so what, um, this is somebody from uh, GoPro, is, is capturing, the, what their mission is to capture life's most exciting moments and share them with others. That's their mission, right? So here's an example of Airbnb in terms of their storytelling. Berlin, 1987. My father was a guard on the west side of the Berlin Wall, while another man guarded the east. Eventually, the wall came down. But even after moving away, my father carried a piece of it with him. While I grew up, it lingered over all of us. A barrier between him and the rest of the world. <coughs> I decided I would help by taking him back to Berlin to show him the beautiful place it had become. arrived, the stranger who answered the door became familiar. The guard who patrolled the opposite side of the wall now welcomed us as a friend. After that, things were better for my father. Airbnb. Been on It's a great story, right? Doesn't talk about their product. Doesn't talk about the fact that you can book a place to stay online. Talks about the experience of using of using Airbnb. Okay, so let's. So that's sort of the the reasons why storytelling matters and the power of storytelling. And what we want to think about is maybe shift gears a little bit uh, and talk about audience, right? And the audience for your stories. So uh, one of the things uh, in the previous session we talked about is that is that your everything has to be customer centric. You have to think about what your audience wants to see, what they want to read, what they want to watch. It's not about what you want to tell them, it's what matters to them and what their interests are. So what I want you to do, a little bit of a mini exercise, is I want you to focus on your ideal customer. So who is that person who is going to be the recipient of your stories? Simple exercise, though simple like it, your name, male, female, age, industry, we want you to them up at night. What do they dream about, and how do they define success? So ultimately, this is the audience that you have to tell stories that resonate with them. So think about a quick snapshot in terms of the ideal customer, that person who really values your service, the person who will buy your products or services, the person who will tell their friends and family about it. Sort of like creating personas, right? It's a, it's a simple yeah, persona exercise, like right? But, but the reason it, it matters is that if you don't know who you're talking to, then you don't know if your stories are going to resonate, right? And then, then you can get into testing and things like that. Yeah. But this is the starting point. Yeah, and that makes your content strategy much, much easier more to write. Have people yeah. done develop buyer personas here? Yeah. Anybody not develop buyer personas? I don't want to admit to not. <laughs> so the thing is, if you don't know who your buyers are, mm -hmm. then you don't know how to serve them properly, right? Like you don't know where to talk to them, how to talk to them, what kind of things they're interested in. So this is a simple exercise. So just take a, just a couple minutes just to sort of fill that up. And you can have multiple. You can have multiple buyers. Basically, a niche and something. I would say that most companies can have th at least three or four <coughs> buyer personas. So think about uh, if I was selling lipstick. Well, there's there's women who live in the city and they're single. There's women who live in the city and they have kids. There's women who live in the country. So they have different interests, different needs, different buying habits, and so you've got to appeal to them in that way. That's a very simple example. Based on your experience, how often are these personas actually based on research, and how often are they brought up personas? Well, okay, so sometimes when you're early in your business, it's almost guesstimates, right? You're sort of you're imagining what that customer could be like, but as you go forward, one of the things you have to do as any business is you have to talk to your customers, or talk to potential customers, and get a sense of, are they, like, who are they? And I think one of the, the biggest mistakes a lot of companies make is they don't talk to their customers enough. How are we doing? 
Can I, can yeah. I ask you one question about what you showed before? Yeah, sure. Um, the challenge with, for instance, the astronaut video right. is attaching it to the brand. I remember the video vividly. I can't remember the brand of beans. Interesting. Yeah, I have that. Yeah. Um, it was an imaginary one. No, no, but I mean, <laughs> what I'm point. saying is, even if it wasn't imaginary, mm -hmm. I might, I, I might have already forgotten what brand. Yeah. They've spent all that money. They've done this really good creative work. I haven't attached it to them. Yeah, but, but then they, next that, time you see it, it well, I thought it was funny that it was the brand of an underwear company. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. assuming that you're only seeing it once. Yeah. If they play it over and over and over again, yes, yeah, Jim. So, I heard a story last month about a local company came out of engineering at UOT that has now, as its customers, every cosmetics company in the world, when you mentioned lipstick, you triggered that. Right. Okay. You can go to any of those companies, so, was it Sephora, L'Oreal, etc. You can try your makeup on it. Right. Without it's a virtual reality right. thing, but the company started out doing something totally <coughs> different, but some of their technology has evolved, and when they started in 2006. It was 2010 or 11 before the cosmetics companies caught on to what their technology was doing and actually financed them to do some development work. They're now a seven or eight figure uh, revenue generating company right. Right. doing this. So. It, you know, they learned who their customer was only because somebody happened to pick up right. on what they were doing and then um, uh, targeting that market. Right. And they had to go through a phase of out-competing their competitors and all that sort of stuff. But uh, in an end, they probably didn't know their persona until they were like six, seven, eight years old. Yeah, that's not unusual for companies to sort of to stumble upon what the real what the real sort of purpose is, where the real customers are. Um, anybody want to volunteer buyer for some? If I if I sorry before that, if I may add to if I don't mind, just in addition to Sephora, um, when I started up my show, well, well, you don't know, but the fact is, they have you can get samples, and they have really good <coughs> any type of makeup you possibly think of, with different types of cameras and settings and shows, yeah. and it's it's samples. They give you good, but it's really good makeup. And that's what they do for free without any questions. Uh, so but on, we can get off to makeup. Maybe get buyer yeah. personas, right? No, no, no but what, I'm saying, what yeah. I'm saying to you is the fact that they found um, that that was something, a giveaway, but that's how they draw people in. So yeah. they work with it, and it's amazing. They can't. Well, then it really drove age, lipstick. Age, age 15 to 60, what keeps them up at night? <coughs> um, the health care of their parents. <coughs> the health care needs of their parents. What are they dreaming about? A sustainable, healthy, care at home. What defines the success? Getting the help they need to make sure that their parent can stay in their home. And what's, what's the product that, you, that you're offering? Service? Um, home health care. Okay. It's a new app that's actually launching next month that matches caregivers and care providers. Great. Anybody else? Well, in Our that team. regard, one of my former employees came back to me last year, 20 years ago, came back to me last year. She runs a site called Caregiving Matters that evolved out of her experience with her mother's dementia and Alzheimer's and so on, but now she's broadened it to um, all sorts of things related to the lifestyle of caregivers, uh, seniors' experiences, that sort of thing. Any other buyer personas? Yeah. Um, I used to be the brand manager of Carly Davidson here in Canada. They made sure they were probably 10 different buyer personas. Interesting. Um, especially depending on how you were talking to, mostly segregated by gender and by age. So the older white guy who wanted to live his dream to be sort of the, you know, back in the day, kind of the easy rider kind of thing. So he dreamt about being this cool cat on a motorcycle. But he never wanted to be embarrassed, so we actually created a guy's guide of motorcycle terminology so that he knew what that was, so that when he was talking to his neighbor, he wouldn't mm -hmm. feel foolish about not knowing the terminology. Right. For a young guy, um, he wanted to be the counterculture UFC guy who was all about customization, and so our whole thing with that was actually um, connecting with them at music festivals, um, you know, fighting like uh, different MMI or. Mixed martial arts. 
Mixed yes, martial arts. training, uh, different kinds of elements like that. For a woman, it was about empowerment. So we actually did a garage party where there was no men in the room, and we had women service people talking to women about there's no stupid questions. And so what we would do with them was teach them the language of motorcycling and the comfort and the safety because that was their concern, um, but in an entirely different marketing tactic than we did with the older white guy or the young counterculture guy. So interesting food for thought. So, so the, the idea is that if you, if you, I mean, what we're asking you to do is a really down and dirty buy persona, but you should take a step back after you know, you, you've been to this uh, podcast weekend and, and podcast weekend and think about buyer personas and actually spend some time creating one buyer persona. Start with one, maybe you have two, there's two obvious buyer personas, but get to know your target audience and the better you know them, the better stories you can tell because you can um, tell stories that align with your interests and their needs. Okay. So the first steps to storytelling, right? And this is one of the big challenges, is how do I get started with storytelling? And really, it comes down to some advice from Sue Jen to tell the entrepreneur and the marketer, is write down all your ideas all the time. And so the way that you would do it is that we have storytelling inspiration. You're at a party, you're in the shower, you're at a pod camp, um, you're at a business meeting, and a lot of those really great story ideas escape because you don't capture them. And so the way you do this, is you can use all kinds of great tools. I'm a pen and per paper person. Like I write things down. I have, I have, I have notebooks and notebooks and notebooks, and sometimes I even go back to them, right? Because they're in my library of ideas. But you can use. <coughs> I use Pocket a lot when I'm on the web. I use Evernote a lot. I use Trello. Um, you've got Google Notes. So, so step one is <coughs> if a good idea strikes you, a good story it strikes you, write it down, and have like ideas for blog posts, ideas for infographics, ideas for videos. But you have to capture all those ideas. And, and some of the things you might want to think about when you're storyboarding is think about the different types of stories you can tell. So one would be about flow, which is your best moments, major milestones, you just got a major customer, you attract adventure capital, you launch a new website. Failure. Stories about failure are really powerful because they prove that you're authentic. They prove that you can relate to the average entrepreneur of day. There's a company called Groove HQ, and they wrote a blog post about the fact that how their company always failed. Pivots, forks in the road, so pivots, how your business changed direction, how a lipstick company became a lipstick company. Um, stories about your, your customers. You should be, like, we all should be having stories about like, testimonials and, and, um, and case studies to celebrate our customer success. Funny stories, you know. Humor is really a great way to resonate with people, like the video that I showed you. Um, quotes, anybody on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of the great things about Instagram is quotes. Like when I post something that's a good quote, there's lots and lots of interest in that, as much as some of the photographs that I that I take, right? And then talk about the future. So tell stories about where you're going. Like what's next for you? What's next for your business? Where you want to take your business to the next level. Okay, so that's storyboarding. If you I'll, I'll share the slides the uh, the presentation so you don't have to write everything down. But let's look at how we can start walking and talking and telling really great stories. And it starts with six storytelling themes. It starts with origin stories and stories about what you think, stories about your challenges, stories about your customers, stories by your customers, and then you have earned stories. So one of the best is founder stories. And I really like founder stories because it's personal and it's really authentic. So you've got Chipotle, for example. So the founder of Chipotle, he really wanted to start, he went to culinary school and he wanted to start a high-end French restaurant. But he couldn't afford to open a high-end French restaurant. So he opened a brewery place, and then that was so popular he opened another one, and he opened another one, and he's never actually opened a French restaurant. Um, Richard um, Branson, it's a great story, he, he was uh, on his way to the Virgin Islands to meet a young lady, and his, and his connecting flight got cancelled. And Branson being Branson said, well this is no good, so he went and he chartered a plane, and he walked around the airport with a chalkboard that said $39 flight to the Virgin Islands. He sold that plane out and thought, you know what, I'm onto something. And that led to the start of Virgin Airlines. Um, and this is a, a little a company in Toronto called um, um, Shoe, Shoelace, I think they're called. Um, and they were in uh, Colorado, at an accelerator in Colorado. Um, and they really wanted them to stay in Colorado because they, this, they thought this company's really exciting and they wanted to come back to Canada. They repatriated back to Canada because it was thought it was a better environment, a better place to do business. And so that was their story, how they came back to Canada. So what I want you to do is create your own origin story, right? In a couple minutes coming up, so why did you do what you did? So for, my, for me, my origin story is I got laid off. I was working for a startup, 
I had three kids, I had a mortgage, and it was like, now what am I going to do? And so I went on to social media and said, I just lost my job, and I got, a, I got somebody saying, can you do a marketing plan? I'd never done a marketing plan. So I went on Google and said, how do you do a marketing plan? And that was the beginning of my marketing career. Uh, so what I want you to do is think about, what's the inspiration for your startup or your business? What's the problem that you wanted to solve? What's the challenges of your journey? And talk about your success. So something about your origin story. It's been a couple of minutes just coming up with something really simple, like, like how did you start? Why did you start, right? Let's well, spend a couple of minutes doing that. And this is great storytelling. This is classic storytelling. You know, you think of somebody's about page, for example. Part of it is, here's what we do, here's our customers, and here's how we got started. How many people actually hate or have a business? Okay, so you've all got founder stories. Talk about that storytelling gap, yeah, and there's stories right in front of us. Like how we started is a classic story. And we tell that story probably on a, on, a, on a regular basis. Does anybody want to riff? Anybody want to tell their founder story? Why did you start your business? <coughs> well, I'm not the actual founder, right. but I'm the one putting the story out there to the public. Okay. The why you care next got started is because of I need a dimension with one of the co-founders and the other co-founder had a mother with Parkinson's. So, and I actually have a mom who has COPD and has needed care for the last 10 years. So all of us who are actually coming together to bring that out to the marketplace all have stories regarding healthcare and the necessity of having quality healthcare in the home. So a good personal story. So it's a very personal story, but we also see a huge need, especially with the aging population. And the way that agencies and stuff come together right now is ineffective and there's high costs. So we're actually bringing together a model that's going to be an actual, more affordable model for Canadians. And we've actually just gotten government funding for not only this app, but to more that will actually come along. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, I have a travel site for people who travel alone. Okay. And um, my origin story is that um, in 2006 my husband passed away, and in 2009 I was kind of falling into another cycle of grief. Uh, I was sitting on the couch, I picked up my computer, I googled solo travel. I traveled on my life, good friend my life. And uh, what came up was a whole lot of stuff about single travel and, you know, hooking up and stuff like this. And I went, whoa, this has to have another voice. <laughs> so, uh, so then I started the site. Great, that's a good story. Your story. Uh, kind of similar to Mark filling in. Um, I don't particularly have a business, but I started a food podcast um, because my origin story I was thinking of um, was I was really sick one time and I was craving this soup that my mom used to make for me back home in the Philippines. Uh, and I never learned how to make it from scratch. And so I went to journalism school and I just always had this, you know, this innate questioning in my head. And it started off this whole like journey of trying to find out, okay, what exactly goes into that? How do I get that in Canada? How many people make that from scratch in Canada? Um, you know, how can I continue making it and pass it along to like my kids and stuff like that? So it became, uh, the podcast is now about kind of exploring your identity as a first or second generation Canadian through food. And it's been kind of interesting because I've talked to people as well and go, oh yeah, I know my mom used to make that at home, but like I never learned how to make it. And it's kind of empowering for people to kind of learn it that way. It's great. It's a story about experience, personal experience and relating to food, which is something a lot everyone can relate to. Anybody else? Yeah. So I worked uh, for 25 years as a photographer and actually was quite successful at it. Um, but the industry changed a lot um, during the, the time that I was uh, doing it. And what I saw was just, you know, I, I was trained and accomplished as a photographer, but everyone was uh, taking 
actually very good photographs just for their phones and things like that. So what I saw was a need to um, learn more about marketing and incorporating marketing and photography. So I did less of the photography and did more marketing and now I'm at the point of merging marketing with the social media um, with a strong uh, storytelling component. But with, with the right. Videos. So a little bit of drama there, right? Yeah. Because they're like the heroes on a really great ride and suddenly yeah, the yeah. hero's not doing so well. It's a classic storytelling model. One more. You might again back. So I was working in the States under a specialty work visa, building schools and fundraising, and I got laid off. I had just bought a house, my two kids were in school, and I had 30 days to get into business again or be hired by someone or I'd be deported. So I approached uh, somebody I knew in the fundraising field and said, look, you don't have to pay me, just say that you did to the, to the government and I'm going to start this up and it's a new kind of donation platform. And the problem I wanted to solve was all, it, I wanted to do unbiased donations in a local neighborhood community. So everybody gives locally between businesses and nonprofits, and there's a lot of nonprofits where I was. For example, here in Toronto, if you approach a small business and they say, oh, I've already given to the hospital for sick kids, which is a great nonprofit, but then there's so many others, like the raped crisis clinic that isn't sexy and doesn't get the donations. So I invented a new way of doing donations that kind of merges marketing and philanthropy together for businesses and for nonprofits, and everybody's winning. It won an innovation award. It's facilitated 1.4 million right now offline, and I want to scale it now to other cities. So what, we all have great origin stories, right? And the stories that we tell our friends and our family and people that we meet at events like this, and what we have to do is harness those stories and realize that we all have stories in us, and the, the thing is just to sort of start to ingrain that kind of thinking into how we do business. So a few more examples of storytelling in action. Um, so as I mentioned, stories about failure. So this is a very successful customer service software company called Groove. And this blog post um, they wrote um, about how they almost died, right? So you think, well, why would I tell a story about how my business struggled and almost um, almost capitulated? And the thing is, people can relate to that because most businesses don't do well. And so it, it personifies the brand. Um, at the time, we had 65 comments and 2,000 shares. So people like these kind of stories because they're relatable to an earlier point. Um, stories about what you think, right? So um, about like when you're when you're starting off, like you don't have much to to uh, not money traction, right? So what, so how are you going to rally people about about your brand and what you're doing? Well, it's what your opinions are. So what do you think about trends? What do you think about um, in this case? Um, making your salaries completely transparent to everybody in the world, right? So it's all about thought leadership and telling the world what you think um, and what your ideas are so people can rally around those ideas and think about, well, this, there's a person behind the business, right? Um, stories about your customers. Like I said, how many people, how many people create case studies? Or testimonials or videos or text-based stories? So your customers are your most powerful marketers. And case studies are the way to celebrate their success, to showcase to the world that somebody bought your product or service, they got value out of it, and they generated results. And so the other thing that it does is it empowers your, your um, customer to talk about their experience with your product or service. So if you make them feel like stars, they're going to be stars. And what are they going to do? Well, they're going to share that story with other people in their network. So the power of storytelling by your customers is really great. Um, and Airbnb, again, is a great example of a brand that tells customer stories. It's a story about Judith. Uh, Judith is a host in New York, and there's stories about her experience as hosting people from around the world, right? So again, right, tell, tell a story about your customers, uh, and that's very powerful because people believe them, they're, they're authentic stories, and they'll tell those stories over and over again. Stories by your customers. So this is GoPro. And what they've done is that if you make a great video of an amazing adventure, well, you can submit it to GoPro using a hashtag on social media. Their social media team, their marketing team, will gather the best stories and showcase them on their website. And so how do you make, think it, you feel if your video gets showcased on the GoPro website? You feel awesome. You feel like, really, if my adventure has been captured and it's been shared, then what are you going to do if that happens? You're going to share with other people, right? Yeah. 
I've been noticing a couple of my friends have been hashtagging their photos iPhone X, and I think it's because iPhone is now, to, or like Apple's now taking people's photos and making billboards out of them. So if you hashtag your photo with what phone you're using, you might be an ad as well. Right, yeah. right. So it's, it's an amazing way of empowering your customers and turning them into a marketing and sales machine for you. Um, so, so, so make it easy for your customers to tell their stories in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so what's your story? So this comes down to trying to figure out what is your what is your story? What is the story that you're going to tell when someone says, so what do you do, right? So what I want you to do um, is I want you to start with four-word stories. A four-word story about your business. So this is a classic sort of um, running, walking before you run storytelling. I'll give you a few examples for inspiration. So uh, Pinterest. Four-word story for Pinterest. How would you describe Pinterest in four words? Anyone? Take yes? I'm confused. All my favorite things. Yeah. All my favorite things. All my favorite things. Anybody? Four word description of Pinterest. Anybody else? Organize your favorite things. Right? Pinterest is a place to. So it's a good example. Um, Square. People are familiar with Square. So it's a way that you can accept credit cards on a mobile phone. Or, you know, when you go into a store, they can tap on a tablet. You may want for Square. Run your business anywhere, right? So I could take payments on my mobile phone if I, if I wanted to, right? Tinder. Anybody want to guess on Tinder? Nobody wants to be Tinder. Anybody want to guess? Visual hookups tonight. Visual hookups tonight, okay? Uh, it could be, it's how people meet, right? So the question so what's your, what's your four word story? If you have a business, tell me your four word story that describes your business. If you don't, you can make one up about a business that you would like to start. So, in other words, um, it's your slogan. Your it's kind of like a tagline or a slogan, yeah. So for us, we have, uh, for our, our media, it's where creativity lives. Where creativity lives. Where creativity <laughs> lives. So, so that kind of thing, right, for your business. So take a few minutes and come up with a four-word story to describe business. Why four? because I just decided that four is a good thing. Actually, there's a guy named James Buckhouse. He's, a, he's in the Valley, and uh, he came up with the concept of the four-word story because it, he felt that it really um, makes people disciplined about the stories that they tell. If you give people more words and they get a little, like, by the starting point, they get a little, they can meander, right? So four words makes you really focus on people. Well, it's, it's, right? it's a rip-off of an idea that Hemingway put out there many that years ago <laughs> called the six words. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. All right. It was heartbreaking, that one. <laughs> Maybe I'll, maybe I'll still Hemingway's idea and put it in the uh, You know, four, six, it's all about the constraints. Right, exactly. So no adverbs, no articles, nothing of that sort. You can do whatever you want. No but adverbs gotta, at all. It's got to be a story that makes sense, right? So it's how people meet. I mean, that's a simple story. It's hard, but it actually isn't that hard when you think about it. You can get into it. I mean, just allow your creativity to, to run wild, right? And that's the one thing about storytelling. It is a very creative exercise. It's not about data. You know, it's about what we're telling about narratives, about emotions. What are you thinking, Jim? What are you doing? Well, I told you about my son's company, which could be called Imaging for Card Count. Right. And what's your son's company? What does it do? Um, he's both a cardiologist and an engineer. The company, it's 75 people up in North York but they do imaging of your arterial, your heart's arteries, using ultrasound and optical techniques. So you can boil that down into four words. And you've got four words? Better home can be simple. Okay, crazy. Making your teams, oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, get more customers online. Get more customers online, okay, great, yeah. Making your teams better. Okay, anybody else? Yeah. Wrong questions, right way. Okay, and what's the, what's the business? Uh, so I actually have a podcast, it's called Inappropriate Questions. It's about breaking down questions asked to minorities and marginalized groups. So things like, have you had the surgery to transgender people? Why don't you drink? You just drink. And it started this, like, I'm mixed, and I get a lot of questions about my ethnicity. Right. So I complain to friends, and I do a podcast. Well, I'm in the before we story again is? Wrong questions, right way. Okay, great. Anybody else? In the back, yeah. Um, engaging the right audience. Engaging so, the right audience? Uh, the right audience. I started a, a bilingual social media agency, so cater to uh, French side, 
and also because I, I found I found that in Toronto there's not many so I decided to create it and now I get clients from actually Montreal coming to me so it's pretty cool. Engaging the right audience. Okay, cool. Anybody else? No. Yeah. Taste your dog everywhere. Taste your dog everywhere. Okay, and your business? Dog travel website. I'm going to write a dog travel website. Okay. All right. It's, it's actually pretty simple, right? And, and you can get more creative um, and you can tell, start telling stories in a very short form. Okay. So, what we're going to do, what's your 10 words? Let's break it out a little bit, right? Add all the adverbs back in. Yeah. Add the adjectives and the adverbs back in. So, a 10 word story. So, you started with four. Now, I'm asking you to more than double it. It's only 10 words. So how many words are in an elevator, Steve? I don't know. How, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> well, I mean, elevator pitch could be elevator pitch, a couple sentences, right? It could be ten words. It could be twenty words, right? It's it's the ability to basically tell a very succinct story that gets people to say, "So tell me more." Or how do you do that? Right? Like it's it's a can opener, really, when you think about it, right? You're basically trying to get people interested. Four words, you know. Gets me, gets opens the door for me. Ten words cracks the door open even, even wider. Twenty-five words. Hundred forty characters. Hundred forty characters. So we're telling in hundred forty characters. We're telling for Twitter. Anyone want to volunteer? Yeah. No job is too big or small. No job is too big or small. Wait, ten words, but well, you're, you're I mean, getting there. No, you're no, but that's what that's what we have. Isn't it? Our community of caregivers provide you the home care you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Work in its work in progress. Anybody else? Yeah. Mine's not ten, but I got uh, helping customers find your business on Google. Okay, that's good. I mean, I know what you do. It's good to the point, right? So the <laughs> idea is that. Start, you don't have to think of storytelling as being this big sort of beast that you have to tackle, you have to take down right away. It actually starts in very small steps, right? So you can start with four words, you can do 10 words, you can start with a 300 word blog post, you can do a 500 word blog post, you can do a simple infographic on Canva, you can make a one minute video. So we can tell stories in stages, right? We can walk before we run. Um, but the biggest thing is to tell stories, is to not get intimidated by storytelling. Because um, I think that stops a lot of brands in their tracks, a lot of entrepreneurs, is that we, we think storytelling is this big thing that only big brands can do, and we all can do it. We all can tell stories about why we started a food podcast or why we started um, a social media agency. Okay? So the goal is, as you go forward, is to figure out what your 25-word story is, which could, could be your elevator pitch, and eventually, if you want to do something really ambitious, is you create a 100-word story. This is Warby Parker. Um, and this is the story about how they can start and what their mission is and who their customers are and why they're doing what they're doing, right? So the leap from four to 100 is not that far if you do it in stages, right? So what we want to do is something related and we want to look at value propositions, right? And this is a key part of your messaging and your storytelling is trying to figure out what you do, who you serve, and why it matters. So a value proposition is a statement of unique benefits and value delivered by your product to your customer, target customers, right? So what you do, who you serve, why it matters, right? Could be around what your target audiences are and how you're unique and, and what you're actually delivering, right? So the questions are, what is your product? What problem are you solving? Who's your target audience? What's the value? And how is your product unique or different? And this last one is really, really important because in any marketplace there are dozens not hundreds, if not thousands of companies that are doing exactly what you're doing. They look the same, they smell the same, their prices are the same, their uh, benefits are the same, and so how do you stand out from the crowd? What is your unique twist? How are you different? So think about those questions when you're, when you're crafting a value proposition. We're going to do a down and dirty value proposition, but here's the, here's the template that we're going to follow. So for target audience who needs this, this is what we do. And we'll go back to it, but I just want to show you an example. So this is my value proposition. So I help fast growing companies move even faster by creating marketing and it really works. So you think that you break that down is my target audience is fast growing companies. The benefits is I help them grow them faster. And the product is a, a marketing that actually works. So there's three different benefits, right? Who I serve, fast growing companies. 
what the benefits are when you work with me, and what my product is, what I'm actually delivering, right? So think about that model when you're creating a value proposition. So we'll go back to this value proposition template. So target audience, what you do, and what the benefit is, or what, what how you're unique, and then we'll go back to this and model it after this, right? So think about your own business. Just down and dirty value propositions. I'll give you a couple of examples just for inspiration. You've got Uber. So Uber is Uber's evolving the way the world moves. By seamlessly connecting riders to drivers through our app, we open more possibilities for riders and more business for drivers through your value proposition. Or you look at Square. Square lets you run your business anywhere. It make it easy for anyone to accept credit cards so they can start selling today. So if you go back to this, what is your value proposition? And keep in mind, right, this is really sort of down and dirty value propositions. In an ideal world, you spend the time, you talk to your customers, you come up with iterations, and you come up with a story, in this case a value proposition that works for you. Yeah. Right time. I think uh, lunch is next. Do you guys want to keep going? No, there's another, another session. Another lunch session. Lunch okay, so we'll, uh, we'll wrap up with this. That's the structure for an elevator. That's it right. is too. Yeah. 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 You said this presentation was going to be available somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to. I'll put it on SlideShare and then I'll, I'll let the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, great. Okay, so I think we're running out of time, but I, I just wanted to um, just want to flow through some of the other slides to show you what where we're going from here. So, value proposition template, um, and then what happens is, the next thing about your storytelling that I really want to focus on is telling your, your audience to the right people at the right time. So this is called the list rank, list rank prioritized framework. So the way, I'm really going to go fast and furious here. So what it starts off with is, I want you to look at, at storytellers, as brand storytellers. Think about all the places that are possibly relevant for your brand. So where could you, what marketing channels could you embrace? Where could you tell your stories? It could be podcasts, or infographics, or videos, or your website. So list everything, right? And then what I want you to do is rank them, right? And I'll share the template with you. So rank them based on one to five, being one being expensive, five being inexpensive, effort, one being hard. Rank them all, and what you'll come up with is something like this. So you'll look at blogging, the cost of blogging, is, is about a four, it's relatively inexpensive. The effort's about a three. ROI, we think it's a four. And what's the score? 11. And what you'll end up, you'll end up discovering is that things, certain channels, certain marketing activities will rank higher, so that those are the things you should focus on, right? And then you divide your, your storytelling and your marketing into three buckets. The stuff that you can do now, this is over the next three months to move the needle. The stuff that you do soon, sort of three to six months out, stuff that you do later, but you'll never do it, right? So that's a way of sort of taking your storytelling and making it focus and giving it some discipline. Um, and then, finally, this is how you can get in contact with me. So if you're looking for marketing advice, both strategic and tactical, and marketing harness by storytelling, I can help you with that. Are you expensive? That's what you call expensive, right? I work with small businesses. I work with small businesses and startups, so this is so I it's at the sandbox. Your answer is I have to pay a mortgage and raise my children. And final slide is that this is how you get hold of me. A couple things, just some takeaways. So I launched a video course a couple months ago called Story Spark, and it helps you answer the question. So what do you do? You go to a cocktail party, and someone says, So what do you do? Is your answer compelling? Is it interesting? Does it resonate? Well, it's a free video course that you can take. It uh, includes a workbook and a framework to help you get going. Um, a lot of people have asked me for coaching. Uh, they're not ready for full-blown consulting, but they need some marketing coaching. So you can, you can find out about my coaching services there. And then, I'm, I created, three years ago, I created a book called Storytelling for Startups. Um, I rewrote the whole book. Um, the working title was Fewer Spelling Mistakes, More Pictures. Um, it's now called Story Spark. If you want to sign up to, in advance to sort of find out about the book and when it comes out and some, some value added resources, you can go to that landing page and you can sign up. I'm going to stick around. If you have any questions, we can probably do it outside. Um, thank you for coming and thanks for your attention.